the flight of the earls the 400th anniversary 2007 so we've been laying the ground for tonight's lecture um, in that we've been familiarizing ourselves with O'Neill and O'Dowell. <clears throat> so I'll try and um, take that as read, that we all understand who Hugh O'Neill and who, who the, who the O'Neills were and who the O'Donnells were. They all originally came from the same route way back. Um, they had fought each other for a number of centuries as rivals um, in the north of Ireland. Um, and then they came together uh, with Hugh, actually, that was one of Hugh's great um, achievements, was that he he, he, he um, got them together, working closely together. <clears throat> and they fought together at the Battle of the Yellow Ford and uh, at Kinsale and, and so on. And in fact, it was the fact they were so united and working together, not just the O'Neills and the Donalds, but all the chieftains of Ireland, for the first time in many centuries, were united against English rule, and that's what really spooked Elizabeth and the English, as you know. But I'm going to try and um, uh, I'll, I'll, I won't dwell so much on the um, the events leading up to it because we've dealt with them s so well. Um, so I kind of start with. Uh, why or what happened in the years in between 1601 when the uh, at the Battle of Kinsale and um, 1607 well it, interestingly enough the English the Queen well the Queen was dead in 1603 but the English government let's say the Parliament um, in the last years of Elizabeth's life, they were pretty well exhausted. They had um, almost Im impoverished the English nation in trying to subdue Ireland. Um, and a lot of, by the way, a lot of information is coming out now. A lot of very good research has been done, apparently, in uh, relation to this 400th anniversary, which is great. Um, <clears throat> a lot of going back and looking at a lot of original documents and, and uh, letters and so on. And that apparently is one of the things that has come out fairly recently, is the extent to which the, uh, the Nine Year War uh, and putting down the various Desmond rebellions and so on in Ireland had been extremely costly to to the English, to the point where, um, towards the end of her reign, Elizabeth was finding it hard to um, to keep the Parliament off her back because uh, they were so um, annoyed at her for spending so much money on Ireland, and yet it was the number one foreign policy item f for her uh, her uh, her reign. <laughs> Um, so that when the Treaty of London was signed between Spain and England in London in 1604 <coughs> um, with James, her successor, both Spain and England were very, very glad to make peace. Now, they had been in the process of making peace for, for, for several years prior to that and that had affected everything that went on in Ireland a lot of a lot of people including myself now believe that the Spanish expedition that was sent to Kinsale was just a token expedition and it really was a ploy it was just a pawn in the negotiations that were going on uh, in London and uh, the truth of the matter is that um, they went to Kinsale did about pretty well nothing and came right back with everything they had including more than half of the money that the commander had to spend to spend there. So one has to 
question why they were there. They were there, I think, in order to strengthen the hand as sort of a threat hanging over the negotiations in London. So, yes, sir. Didn't Mountjoy kill a number of them? Pardon? Didn't Mountjoy kill a lot of Spanish soldiers? Not really. No, not really at all. Um, in fact, they were all allowed back to, to, uh, to Spain unharmed, and they never did come out of Kinsale. So actually, no, they didn't lose hardly any. The only ones that killed or died were died of starvation and mal mal maltreatment by their own commander. He was a real skinflint. Um, no, they, they, they didn't suffer any battle casualties at all. Um, may, I, I won't say at all. Uh, they did... Uh, they, they did do some little fighting, but they never did come out to help the Irish out of, out of, the, battle, out of the town of Kinsale. But anyway, the background is that the the English and the Spanish were trying to they were trying to call it a day. They, they, it was like the end of the the, the war for them. <coughs> Spain, because it was on its knees economically, it actually went bankrupt in 1607, um, and um, uh, largely because, remember, it was Habsburg dominated. It was not the old Elizabeth and uh, or, uh, Catherine of Aragon and uh, um, uh, Ferdinand, of, Ferdinand of Aragon and Catherine of Castile. You know, uh, it was um, Habsburg owned therefore Germany, German. And they didn't really think of it as Spain. You know, we think of it as Spain, but it, it, they didn't think of it as Spain. They just thought of another one of their possessions. And quite frankly, they neglected it. And <clears throat> also it had become very dependent on the New World. <clears throat> so the, its ability to bring in so much gold and so, many, so, many, so much from the New World actually retarded its economic development. And uh, that's another, uh, yeah, another st sort of st string or stra strand to this whole story. But the, the complicated web of European politics is the background uh, to which, uh, in which um, the O'Neill and O'Donnell found themselves um, now, at first, they did very well, and even though the uh, um, Mountjoy cheated O'Neill in that he didn't tell the Queen that, or tell the Queen, tell O'Neill that the Queen was dead um, when he signed the Treaty of Melifont um, in 1603, uh, he was... Um, he did very, very well out of it. And the reason he did, well, he was given safe conduct, for instance, and he was confirmed in his earldom, and uh, O'Donnell was invited to London. Well, James later, um, uh, afterwards, and um, he, was made, he was made Earl of Tyrconnell in London. Remember, he was the first Earl of Tyrone, whereas Hugh O'Neill was the second Earl. What was the significance of the Queen's death? <coughs> what difference did, did they? Have made the it's un, under the it, it, the law under which the land operated. Uh, by him accepting an earldom, uh, he submitted to English law, and therefore English titles. And the most important thing was that by becoming the Earl of Tyrone, the Earl of of um, uh, um, Tyrconnell. Under English law, they personally owned the land. They personally owned the land. So then they would have given real estate. They would have granted uh, land to other people under them. Whereas, see, under the Gaelic system, they didn't own the land. They were just figureheads. No, but you said that Queen, he didn't tell him that Queen had died. And I was curious as to what was significant. Why he did that? Yeah, and what, what difference would it have made? Well, it was a personal <laughs> thing. <coughs> it was... Uh, a personal thing, <coughs> excuse me, um, by um, 
Um, Mountjoy. It was Mountjoy, wasn't it? Um, well, remember now, Mountjoy, Mountjoy was, he had served the Queen. He was, he was the Queen's general. He was um, very much associated with uh, Elizabeth. Now you had this new guy coming in, James. What, what was going to happen to him? So, it was a new administration. There was a new administration coming in and it was right on the, on the cusp. And what he wanted to do, he wanted to have the O'Neill deal sewn up. So he then, uh, so he wasn't going to be pushed, shunted to one side and somebody else, uh, James might send somebody in. All kinds of things would happen. 